This is the 2022 Infiniti QX60. This vehicle has been redesigned for 2022 and Infiniti wants you to believe that it's better in every way. It certainly is better looking. The question becomes, if you're in the market for a mid-size luxury three-row family hauler, should you consider the QX60? Let's find out. You're gonna to wanna to hit the Googles for this next part, but search for Infinity Monograph Concept. That was a show car that was beautiful. And the problem with show cars is a lot of times they look great up there on the stage, but by the time that that design language filters down to an actual production vehicle, it's been very diluted. Not so the case here with the new QX60. Infinity's done a great job with the design. The problem for the QX60 is that it's in a very competitive segment, luxury three-row family haulers. Throwing out all the German competition, this thing still has to compete with stalwarts like the Lincoln Aviator, the Volvo XC90, the Cadillac XT6, and the Acura MDX. So I think the QX60 is a very handsome vehicle. This is a great design. I've already mentioned design twice before because it really is important and here's why. Fundamentally, there's not much difference between a Nissan Pathfinder and this Infiniti QX60. They're fundamentally the same vehicle. So if you're gonna charge more for this one, you've gotta do something to spruce it up. And I think that this bold, handsome design really does that. Infiniti is all in on the giant grill. They're sticking with it. Look at the size of this. Look at the size of that badge. Look at how they've stamped Infiniti right there in the metal, even though it's not metal. Coming down the side, you know, SUVs, they all sort of look alike, right? It's a two box shape. So Infiniti's done a nice job of making the QX60 look more sporty. Check out the sill. That's really nice work there. It looks cool, it's curvaceous, and it really hides a lot of the visual mass. I also really like what they've done here with the D-pillar and the floating roof. Just great, that's great work. Coming up back, it's a massive SUV. The one thing that jumps out are these humongous fake chrome tailpipes. The real tailpipes are in front of them. Everybody's doing fake pipes. These just really jump out at me. But again, the big point is the last QX60 was kind of a meh design, and this one is not. Just like the exterior, the interior of the QX60 is a major improvement as far as the touchscreen. Looks nice, software is kind of old, doesn't do a whole ton, but you know, hey, at least it's a touchscreen, works well enough. The material quality in here is, is, is a huge step up. You've got at least two different types of leather, maybe three, not really sure that that's leather, but hey, it looks the part. The seats are very nice, really cool design on the doors, like the way the speakers are, just looks really nice. Good steering wheel, almost everything you touch is great. Really elegant looking HVAC controls. Starting to look a little Hyundai Kia Genesis maybe, but hey, steal from the best. Even the shifter's cool, and I don't think I've ever called out a cool shaped shifter before. It's kind of like an elegant bar of soap. Part I don't like so much are the controls for the screen. For instance, the icon for the home menu button is the same icon essentially as home here, but this means like your house. I want you to program your house in there. But anyway, a small little thing. As far as comfort goes, very roomy, very spacious in here. Middle row's good, third row, it's okay. No third row in this segment is great. Put all the seats down, of course, there's lots of room to haul stuff around, but the big takeaway is they've really improved the inside of this vehicle. Performance is where the QX60 stumbles a bit, and really it's more outdated than anything else. Under the hood, 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6. It's part of uh, Nissan's old VQ family of engines. 295 horsepower, 270 pound-feet of torque. Goes into a nine-speed automatic transmission. That's notable because the last QX60 had a CVT, and everybody, present company included, hated it. So we were very happy to hear there's gonna be a new nine speed. Problem is it's just not the world's greatest nine speed. Power goes to either the front wheels on lower spec trims or like on this one to all four wheels. Acceleration, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's just not that quick, especially compared to some of the competition. And as far as, you know, handling goes, let's be frank, you're not buying a QX60 because it's a driver's vehicle. You're buying it for other reasons. It can tow 6,000 pounds, and that's one of the advantages you do get from the nine-speed automatic transmission. In terms of efficiency, it's okay. 
21 miles per gallon in the city, 26 on the highway, and that's for front wheel drive. If you go all wheel drive, go ahead and drop one MPG for each category. As far as safety goes, the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety gives this thing good marks in all categories, except for child seat attachment points where the QX60 earns a good plus. As far as automatic safety equipment goes, this is stacked. You've got stuff like automatic emergency braking, blind spot monitoring, and adaptive headlights. How much? Okay, you can get into an infinity QX60 pure front wheel drive for just under $48,000. If you want a fully spec'd up version like this one, this is an autograph all wheel drive. We're talking nearly $65,000. That's quite a chunk of change until you start to consider the competition. The standout in the segment, which is the Lincoln Aviator, well, one equipped like this is over $80,000. That's a $15,000 price difference. So if you can't afford the Lincoln, forget about it. If you look at some of the other competition though, the Acura MDX, it's about $2,000 less than this. And a Volvo XC60, the T6 all wheel drive, which is the same, costs about the same. If there's one thing I want you to know about the redesigned 2022 Infiniti QX60, it's that it's halfway there. Look, it's a great looking vehicle. The interior is a huge improvement. They put the right type of transmission in it, but the powertrain, it, it's just a letdown. And so really is the ride and the handling. And I just think if you're spending this type of money on a premium product, you don't want any compromises. To summarize, Infinity has mastered the design. Let's see them master the powertrain. To see vehicle rankings and a complete buyer's guide, please visit motortrend.com slash cars.